There, I've got the recording going. Now I'm going to go back to the share. Okay, so the session is in fact being recorded. So smile pretty, everybody. <laughs> While we go through this, if you're not speaking, it's best to remain muted. Otherwise, the feedback can overtake our session and uh, we won't be able to hear what everybody is saying. Um, my role is not to do a lot of talking. My role here is to do a lot of listening and to keep us on task and within our time limit. We're at 11.53, according to Sue, we were running one hour, which we will wrap up about 12.45. So I do wanna just um, dive in and start having conversations and, and your thoughts um, in, the, in these three areas. Always keeping in mind that we are trying to come up with ideas around in-person instruction, which is our ideal. We come back through the doors in September and it's business as usual. But also we have to consider that we may have to continue remote instruction as we did in March when we left school and we had to go right to distance learning right away and what that would look like. And the third and probably the most challenge, challenging of them all is that combination hybrid um, model, which is a combination of in-person instruction and online learning. Um, our guiding questions, what do we think are the greatest challenges that we're going to be faced under each of these three um, instructional models? Coming together uh, with some creative solutions to the challenging problems that could work. We're all ears for every kind of suggestion that anybody has out there, hoping to come across some things people may have not thought of and for something for us to consider. And lastly, the institutional, budgetary, and regulatory obstacles. Those are big words. Um, they are very um, specific to our topic, which is special education and English language learners, because there are a great deal of regulations and timelines around the students that we work with and how we might get around some of those barriers and what suggestions we can be making to um, SED and the Department of Health with regard to how they can make that easier for us to do. So with that being said, I'm gonna be quiet and I'm gonna open this up to you. Um, keeping in mind, it's now 11.55 that um, we do have until 12.45 for this and to try and address as much of these areas as we can. So maybe start off with what we think the greatest challenges are um, and start with the in-person instruction. Feel free to unmute yourself and speak or raise your hand and I'll call your name and we'll know that that person's gonna be speaking. You guys hear me? I can, Amy, go ahead. So I'll just share the few things that I wrote down. It's not everything I thought of, but it's what I've thought of maybe right. the top three. So for the in-person, of course, um, enforcing social distancing, just monitoring the kids, keeping them six feet apart, that's like a huge challenge. Um, and also hand in hand with that is proper use of PPE, the masks, hand washing. I mean, I know we did that a lot before all this, but the mass alone with little kids just, that frightens me. Um, and student fears. How do we, I just think that's going to be a, a real issue. And then for me, because of my role, um, one of my concerns is because I go to several classrooms that I'm at ex uh, increased exposure. So I have to go into multiple rooms. So my safety and health is a concern for me as well. Those are the top things I have. Okay. Anything in particular, Amy, with regard to your particular population and um, our services to the L students? For in-person, um, again, just that main piece because from what I understand, it's just me providing K through 12. 
So it's going to be upstairs, downstairs, multiple classrooms, scheduling is going to be an issue. Okay, so I'm gonna bring um, it back because what, what we've talked about here has a lot to do with health and safety as opposed okay. to the special ed or the ENL population. But you just raised an excellent point that I had thought of and, and, and that is the availability of staff to meet those needs, right? Yes, yes. Anything else you could think of there, Amy? Um, no, other than the other things I said, as far as health and safety, mm -hmm. just. Okay. Um, how about remote uh, instruction? For remote instruction, I have as challenges uh, student participation, yeah. because that was low um, the past three months, providing accommodations, I still have no idea how to do that. Family frustration, struggles, um, just demands of families. Um, again, the multiple grade levels, just having access to different teachers' curriculums. And um, just that individual teacher, you know, uh, what's the word, collaboration time. So it's really hard to do. Again, that staffing thing with yeah. 12 different teachers. So. That's a, a big concern for me as well. And what if it was a combination of the two? This is the most challenging one in my opinion. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I don't know even know what that looks like. So it would be a combination of the two challenges I just mentioned. Right. I mean, they're right. kind of the same. So good point. I mean, the only thing I added would just it would just increase family confusion. Uh. What days does my kid go? What time does he go? It would just increase family anxiety, I believe. So that would be another challenge, I think, because I'm not even really sure what that looks like. <laughs> None you know? of us really do. Yeah. None of us really do. Well, thank you very much, Amy. Somebody else like to address these? Hello. Um, I have a couple of things, but they seem to fall under the same thing as the um, health and safety, I think. Um, as you know, Land, I'm a mom, yep. and Landon is in special education, and my thing with the in-person is he has sensory processing disorder. So for him to wear a mask all day, I don't even know how that would even be plausible for him. Right. Um, you know, to go even... He doesn't even, because I'm just his mom, I don't even let him go in stores still. And even when I do to use the bathroom maybe quickly, it's, it's a big issue. Um, and especially with his smaller classroom, I just don't know how you keep the kids apart. You know, there, I think there's only like six or eight kids in his classroom usually. Mm -hmm. um, so that's concerning to me. Um, and as far as remote learning, you know, he did pretty well. Um, he got one of the Germantown Strong things, and he was he participated every day except one. Um, except he is the type of child that when he's participating, he's wonderful. But it's only an hour, and he seems to lose everything, like regress even by the next day. Um, he just couldn't, I couldn't keep him as structured as I know as he could in a classroom, mm -hmm. um, where he has someone who's not mom helping him and the hybrid, I'm a little confused with, because I'm assuming that would mean he goes on certain days and then certain days he is remote learning from home, which I mean, I do get that, but for someone again, like him and a lot of the kids that are in special education routine is like huge for them right. and I just don't know how that would work he would be so flustered I think all the time and I think that would open up for more um health and safety things because you know then they're bringing germs back and forth and back and forth and I don't know if I'm making any sense at all <laughs> you are Rose you are <laughs> Um, yeah, the hybrid model, it, ha it comes in a, a number of forms, and it, it typically comes in the form of some face-to-face -face instruction on specific days or partial day, 
and the other part where the students might be getting distance learning, but they all also might be working on projects at home after having received the instruction in school. Um, there's a lot, a lot to that hybrid model. That's why I say it's very, very broad. And I know you're like, I'm not sure if I'm really addressing it right. But mm -hmm. if we were to have to go with that model, we would really have to hone in on what that would look like and what would work for our families and for our students. So by saying these challenges, it's good so that we know that certain students really rely on routine, which is absolutely true. And yeah. if you start mixing it up, they would probably eventually adjust to it, but it's not like a routine in school where they know every minute of their day what that's going to look like. Um, right. So, you know, you, you are right in the ballpark, Rose. You got it. Okay, okay cool. Okay. Somebody else. Yvonne, I have a couple of things. Um, for the in-person instruction, uh -huh. um, the whole hall thing, moving to different classrooms. Um, our halls are barely six feet wide and um, kids not coming in contact with each other, moving from one classroom to the other, or would it be better to rotate teachers into a classroom and have a group of kids stay in a particular room? Um, for the remote instruction, I have major concerns um, I had a couple of kids that did no work from March 18th till the end of the year. Yep. Um, I had kids that didn't show up for uh, class meetings. Um, you know, my kids need, even though they're in the regular class and they have consultant, that consistency of knowing they have to be in class at a certain time and, um, you know, or they have to be at a meeting, they're not going to show up for class meetings or direct class instruction. And that also comes in with the hybrid model. If they're in school on Mondays and Wednesdays and they're supposed to zoom in on Tuesdays and Thursdays, are they gonna show up? Um, mm -hmm. And again, as um, Amy said, the whole giving them their modifications. You know, um, I can do the, um, the having things read or I can do the copy of class notes, but as far as tests read and stuff like that, it's next to impossible to meet those mm -hmm. other accommodations. Um, so. Okay. All legitimate challenges. Ashley. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm gonna pretty much piggyback off of all that was said. Um, the only good idea I can see from the hybrid is just the accountability of completing work. I mean, because they would know that they would have to come back to school and show me their finished work because I too had students that did not uh, participate on the Seesaw platform um, independently. So in June, I, because of my schedule and because of my situation at home, I was able to meet with one kid daily for an hour and it was up to them to do the work that I assigned for them throughout the week. And I was still in contact with their parents and I was still emailing them. They didn't do anything. So definitely if we go back to remote instruction online, I see the same because I'm going to have just about, well, two of the same students, three of the same students, I see the same situation happening with them. And I also think it's difficult since I'm getting new students this year um, to form that relationship with them online it was a bit easier because I was able to form a relationship with my students in person and then carried on online, but to have completely new students that I've never met in person and I didn't get a chance to meet them last year right. to then see them through a screen. It's, I think it's very tough. Um, in person, my classroom's pretty big, so I can definitely see the spacing can work, but it's also, I have kids at so many different abilities and academic levels, and I always do center-based instruction, and there's my concern with how do I make a small group, am, am I going to keep them like six feet apart? It's just, I, I don't do a lot of whole group teaching with, I can't. Right. So that's, that's definitely my biggest concern, and also I have parents already telling me if my child's not wearing a mask, they're either, he's not wearing one. So I can't make him. Um, I can't make the students wear a mask. So I, I don't, I don't know. I, I really tried to hone in on the hygiene with them. I feel like I got them to a good point and now I feel like we lost it all. So mm -hmm. 
I, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult. Thank you. Susan. Uh, sure. So um, I have a specific thing, but I just want to throw this out there because it kind of ties into budget concerns and affordability. So if we just begin at the very beginning of a school day, which is students getting on a bus, um, isn't that in and of itself going to determine how many kids can come into school on a given day? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I'm, that's why I'm kind of stay out of the other realms that everybody is well, talking about. Not, right. Yeah. But One. I think that's an important point with our ideas that we also have the framework of we're dependent upon, in other words, to come up with our optimum solution on uh, how many kids can come in on a given day, right? That being said, I think for me, so much of what we do with our population is proximity based. Mm -hmm. um, refocus and redirection, um, walking around the room, being able to look at a student's paper and, uh, and point, um, you know, taking our own pencil and writing on their paper. Um, I'm really, I, I don't see how, you know, that whole aspect of how we change and how we can differentiate on the spot in the moment with each individual student in our classroom is going to be redefined or needs to be redefined. Um, and as far as what's acceptable, <laughs> you know, how, how do we meet that accommodation in the new environment? Um, for remote, um, I, ha I have, um, I had some pluses come out of this. Uh, I took my class of 13, I split them up into seventh and eighth graders. So I, I that worked much more effectively for me to be working with, um, a smaller group and not having a TA, you know, uh, with me. Uh, that being said, I found that the behaviors of the students that were already um, demonstrated in the classroom as far as uh, doing their work, staying on task, those behaviors pretty were consistent in the remote instruction as well. If they weren't a student that did their homework, they weren't a student that did their homework in remote instruction. Um, if they if they didn't pay attention in class unless I went over and <laughs> pointed my finger and said write down what I just wrote down, uh, they weren't doing that during the call. So um, how do we you know e even more so ad address that in a remote environment? Um, and then uh, I guess the hybrid to me is that. Um, I, I feel for families that um, not having the daily consistency um, that a school week gives, a, a typical Monday through Friday, is, is really going to um, be disruptive uh, to the family and to the rhythm and the flow uh, that we establish by their, you know, putting their students on the school bus every day at uh, 7 or 7.30 and, and taking them off at 3.30. Um, I, I just really, I, I'd almost rather have one or the other, I guess is what I'm saying, <laughs> for, for our population. Right, right. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sarah. Unmute. Sarah, you're muted, honey. <laughs> there we go. Would you like me to talk? I mean, yeah. I've been trying. You've been I talking. To banging well, downstairs. You. Okay. Um, <laughs> I wanted, uh, you know, I think that a lot of the things have already been covered. I think, especially with my middle school and uh, the girl, guys are going in ninth grade, the personal hygiene issues are going to be a huge issue. I'm going to be... Um, <laughs> It's going to, I think that is going to be an issue because I'm there. It's going to take a lot away from uh, their focusing or my focusing because I'm going to be, uh, you know, 
redirecting them to put the mask back on or to keep or to keep their hands to themselves or yeah. you know how to use that hand sanitizer for the 20th time today right. um you know and so i think those things are going to make it a, that's going to be a little bit different with the remote it's going to be the whole student accountability um i just uh i mean my kids came pretty regularly to my my video chats i will use the word chat because i'm not sure what class i was teaching um but it was very much um you know the whole accountability for them showing up or the accountability that they would do the work that was assigned to them in the same quality that i would get in the classroom um you know yeah they would I would I would put a read works assignment out there and some of those kids could complete it in two minutes when and I'd be back and I'd be going, how did you even listen to the video that was with it? How did you read the questions? You know, listen to the question. There's no way that was done. You just sort of went eeny meeny miny mo. Um, but you know, they wouldn't do that if they were in person in the classroom. Um, and then just the whole the they have my guys had a lot of issues with being able to navigate sites and keep track of um passwords and things like that i mean i know that there were certain things that i could do on my uh, my laptop that the passwords were already saved right but every time i tried to go into that site on my ipad i had to put the you know, my username in, my password in. And the kids all had iPads. So every single time they had to be able to navigate that username, that password. And I kept my passwords identical for every site that I used just because I didn't want them to have to remember too many passwords. Right. Um, but it was just that they would be like, what was that? Mrs. Myers, could you send me the link for that? Or Mrs. Myers, and I'm going, Okay, I've been I've been sending you this stuff. I keep telling them write it down someplace near your iPad. Make sure you have it there. But it was just that was a real issue for them because they'd be like, "Well, I don't remember how to get in there," or I could, you know. So that wasted a lot of time, and also their their ability to know that they could mute me, um, I, which I now have to figure. I'm I now have to go in and make it so they can't mute me because they would play that game. Uh. <laughs> They were fun. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, the combined, the combo thing I actually find more interesting than either or. Uh -huh. um, I think that that might be more doable because I would at least have some face time with them. I would be able to, you know, I mean, there's a big difference between them seeing me scowling on this little screen than me scowling in the classroom. <laughs> they know when to knock it off, but, um, you know, so, and I, and I, it's easier to teach them in person than it is on a remote device. Thank you, Sarah. Hi, Kathy. I'm glad you Hi. got a breakout <laughs> session. <laughs> yeah, while, I, 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 I guess, I guess when I just hit join Zoom meeting on my laptop, it used a different email, so. Oh, <laughs> I had to figure oh. out. Um, but anyway, yeah, I have scribbled down some notes. Um, for us, I mean, with Abby, I, for those who don't know, I'm, I'm the grandmother of a, a eighth, was eighth, now ninth grader. Um, and honestly, it worked pretty well for her. Um, for the, and go away, you don't need to listen to this. <laughs> 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 She's lurking in the other room. Of course she is. Um, because I've always been so frustrated that, uh, especially in the high school end, when when kids are expected to be a little bit more independent with stuff, that I, I didn't know, you know, she'd come home, I'd say, do you have homework? Oh, I did it in study hall. Oh, I did it here. Or this teacher wants us to do it in class. So I didn't have a clue until it was done and I saw the grade or I never saw it, what was going on. And so once we kind of got over the, you know, some of the bumps of, okay, how is the work coming in? That's one of the big issues is consistency in the online teaching. At first it was Outlook and then navigating emails was a, was a nightmare. And where is this assignment? 
once um, several of her teachers switched over to Teams, and that was like wonderful because I could even go out there and and look and see had she turned things in. And there were times that she thought she turned things in, and I said, "Look at saying you didn't." Um, and then we you know figure that out. So. Um, and as somebody mentioned something about like, you know, be, being able to help refocus and redirect, um, I was able to help Abby with that. And I mean, I know there's a difference in families, like I'm able to work from home, I've been working from home. And so I have that luxury of being able to, you know, kind of help her through this and not all families do. We have tons of computers in this house. And we have, you know, Devin, who's a network engineer. So when we have problems with okay, how do you upload this thing when the firewall is blocking you from doing that? Um, you know, helping her record videos of assignments, which proves that she's done things right. uh, like that was, was working you know, well for her. And she passed Spanish, which she was not going to do if she mm -hmm. was in, in school. And it was holding her hand through some of it, but it was, I saw the light bulb go off so many times with her like in, you know, I don't want to go on and on, but like for, um, she had an assignment for uh, FACTS, Family and Consumer Sciences, about make your dream room. And so I let her go. I said, go ahead, you know, with the guidance and said, but show it to me before you're done. And she came out and she's like, okay, I'd paint it red. I'd do this and that. And I'm like, this is your dream room? Think, think big, you know, what uh, my dream room would have, this and that. And the light bulb went off and it's like, oh, yeah, I would have this, that, and the other thing. And then when it came down to making it, she kind of wasn't sure. And I said, well, let's go through some of grandma's dollhouse furniture, see if there's anything you can use. And here's some old, you know, we worked together. I pulled out a bunch of fabric. What fabrics would you want on your bedspread? Your, and she got so excited about this. She's still proud of that shoe box Good. Um, and has pictures of it. And that, so, I mean, that was wonderful to me and we made some you know wonderful progress i thought and i know there's some concern about you know are people doing the work for her um and i saw we just happened to get the uh you know the little letter about you know her iep stuff and i saw all the stuff that was for the fourth quarter was you know because of the remote learning you know, we weren't able to verify anything um you know that it was done by the student or whatever uh, I'd like to focus on some ways to do that. So, because yeah, I helped her, but it was more the refocusing and redirection piece of it. Let's look at it this way. And like Spanish, I think it helped a lot. Heather was wonderful with sending out repeated practice things and saying, do you need more help? You know, more practice sheets on this, you know, learning these words. And we always said, yes, <laughs> send more, send more. So she just had a lot of practice with it. Um, and, you know, she got the hang of it after a while. She was, you know, attending the classes. Sarah, I'm, I'm, I'm not as, as, I didn't seem to have as much um, for science and English. So I think, I don't know if you had a different way of doing it. Um, but every time, like you weren't on teams, you might, so you must've been doing a different thing. So I didn't have a lot of help, ability to help her with that. But um, anyway, so the daily consistency, um, video assignments that was, you know, helping her demonstrate that she had done, that she had done the work, that she uh -huh. knew the stuff. Um, some students have more support at home. I realize that. So that, you know, maybe there's a choice of, if there's a hybrid thing, you know, who has the ability and the comfort level of doing that. Um, and then, um, uh, you know, the thing with just, and I know these aren't part of our thing here, but, but just quickly to touch on a couple of the technology things, like Abby had an iPad, which probably worked great at school, but here she needed something more. And we finally figured out ways that she could log into Teams from one of our laptops. And right. so anytime she had to do like a PowerPoint, it was on the laptop. Even printing the math assignments, for some reason, she, every time we tried to print a math assignment from the iPad, it either came out fuzzy or, or like minuscule. So we would have to print out her math assignments from, from the laptop. And wearing a, a mask, I mean, you know, Abby's used to doing that. We all, we all do that here. I, I've been sewing lots of fun, colorful masks. But 
when you're in a mask for hours, that affects your lack of your, how much oxygen you're getting in. I mean, I'm in a store for, you know, a half hour and I'm like, you know, seeing the, seeing the jokes, are we all women here? That when you get out to the car, ripping that thing off, is like ripping your bra off when you get home. You know, you need, I need oxygen. Um, and I worry about that with any student, um, you know, uh, having to, having to you know, get through a whole school day learning and not being distracted by this thing. Um, Abby's going to have glasses. We just took her yesterday. And so she's going to have this nightmare thing that us with glasses wear, where, where they fog up all the time when you're wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I think that's the end of my list. <laughs> you, Kathy. Appreciate it. Okay. So we're going to move on to the second one. I am really anxious to hear any creative solutions to any of these three models. Um, if you've thought of any, or if you have any suggestions for in-person instruction, which, you know, I don't think you have to be really creative. It's about keeping the kids at a, at a safe distance from one another, right? That's the primary thing. So I don't know, you know, creative solutions for in-person might be back to what Mrs. Trowbridge was talking about with staff moving to the students versus students versus going to the, you know, to the staff member. So if you think about the physical building, that might be the way we want to address the in-person instruction with some creative instructions. Um, Amy, would you like to start us off? You started us off last time. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Um, as far as the actual school building, um, for in-person, well, for the in-person remote, I wrote down as we were speaking, like, Maybe there's a way because somebody said, uh, I believe it was you, Rose, that said your son did really well. Maybe parent choice, they can do either the remote or in school. I don't know how that would work, but mm -hmm. something I wrote down. Um, decrease the number of the students in the school at one time, obviously. Modeling, training on proper usage of masks and hygiene. And then I saw something online too, if we do go back in school, like um, have like a mock day where we videotape it and we show what it actually looks like and what, so just to like decrease the fear of parents, may record it and send it to parents so they can see what it will look like. Uh -huh. And for teachers that go to multiple classrooms, if we can designate a room for, a, um, for uh, support services. So students would come to one room where it can be more, you know, thoroughly cleaned and wiped down between students instead of sending the teacher to multiple classrooms. That's what I have so far. Great. Thank you, Amy. Sure. Uh, Rose, what do you think? <laughs> I knew you were going to call me. <laughs> yeah, it's like school. You know who's next. Yeah, I'm, you know, I really, the same thing as Amy, um, Maybe parents could have an option. Um, Landon did do really well with remote learning, but again, it was the constant, at the end of the day, he was still like, I wanna go back to school. That's it. Main focus is phase, what phase can he go back to school in? So I know he wants to be there. And I think it's a good idea about the, you know, the kids not moving around much. Um, and as far as mass, um, I know that they're allowing like small gatherings now. Um, I think it's like 25 or 10. I don't remember what it is right now. Um, maybe the kids could just wear them in the hallways where there's more corruption going on and more like people. And then once they're in their classrooms, they would be able to take them off. And I know I saw something online about the dividers where you would have like in the stores. I don't know if you don't know what I'm talking the plastic. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so they would have like a cubby to sit at, so, um, but yeah, I don't have so many ideas. Um, I, I do think the hybrid learning though would be the absolute, um, biggest challenge as far as our family goes. I'm sure a lot of, um, special education families would feel the same way. Just again, with the routine, um, unless he knew, unless he knew, like, let's say, um, like pre-K through third grade went, you know, certain days and then they, I don't know. Um, 
I'm confused on this one, so I think I'll do a lot of listening. <laughs> That's fine, Rose. Thank you. Cheryl. You're welcome. So one thing going back to the first question, I had kids that had internet issues. Yep. So if you're doing remote learning or hybrid, um, probably at least four or five of my kids had internet issues. So right. you can put that as a challenge for the first one. Um, I think in person, having the kids, if we are gonna have them in a classroom and rotating teachers in, having lunch brought to them within the classroom um, to avoid the cafeteria um, type of thing. For the remote learning, um, I think we need to have um, more daily direct teacher instruction at a specific time. So if we go on a, we ran at the high school on a two hour delay schedule. Mm -hmm. So if we ran on a one hour delay schedule, the kids know that every morning at nine o'clock, their social studies class is going to meet remotely and they need to be there for direct instruction. Um, because we had um, teachers who tried to stick to their class times for the class meetings, but they were only meeting once a week. Mm -hmm. and sometimes there would be 10 kids there. Sometimes there would be two kids there. Mm -hmm. So I think the kids need to know that if we are at remote instruction, they have to show up for class every day. And maybe the teachers are in the building and doing the remote instruction from their classrooms where they have their materials, they have their whiteboards, they can set their screens up and do what they would normally do in a classroom during that time the kids are there versus, um, you know, since the kids wouldn't be there, they can still see it videoed in a team meeting. But the kids would have to be accountable to show up for the team meetings. Um, yeah. As far as the combination, I could see half a, half a class coming in one day and the other half um, viewing the instruction remotely. So say Mondays and Wednesdays, half the class is in and the other half is viewing remotely. Tuesdays and Thursdays, the other half of the class is coming in. And then the class that was in on Monday and Wednesday with Wednesdays could view remotely. Um, that way everybody gets in building instruction at least two days a week. Or if we did it every other day, they would be two days, one week, three days, the next. And then you would have the hybrid on the, uh, the remote on the opposite days. But we need to make sure if that's the case for either remote or hybrid, that every kid has internet access that's reliable. Yeah. Thank you. Can I piggyback on that, Yvonne, real quickly? Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, what Shaul just said, having like some sort of universal program or as much as we can, because different teachers or educators use different programs. So it's, it was really hard to jump between grades. So the more that we can make things universal, that would really help. And then also someone mentioned scheduling. If we could try and do some sort of master scheduler where we know about different grade levels, teachers can jump in, jump out, check on students. Cause you know, one of the challenges too, we said before, I, I did say, we don't know what work the children are doing. I right. don't know if the parents are doing it. I don't know if their brother's doing it. So progress monitoring, monitoring is huge in our field. So yep. that's another really big challenge. That's all I wanted to add. Okay. Amy, just I, a comment on just that. A second, guys. My pen died. Let me grab another one. Okay. Go Amy, ahead, just a ahead. comment on that. What I did yeah. was all of the teams that my kids were involved with, social studies, science, English, math, um, facts, art, band, music, I had the teachers include me on those teams. Um, and then I was able to see what was being assigned each day or what their weekly assignment was. Um, so you could, if you had a high school student for English, you could ask that teacher to include you on their team in the Yeah, and, and we, d yeah, I did that for, you know, middle school and high school and that worked out fairly well, but just the range of students in the mm -hmm. elementary school, there's so many different platforms, it right. gets a little overwhelming. At the high school, everybody did use the team's approach. Yeah, yeah. So we were pretty consistent with that, with even with the kids. Yeah, that worked out well. Yes, I, I know that I didn't use teams this year, uh, very, I didn't use it because uh, it, it was very confusing for my guys in the beginning. I think they've gotten better at it. So, um, you know, 
if we went back to remote learning, I will definitely be using Teams um, with them. I'm just hoping that um, now that you know they seem to be able to use it, some of my guys still had issues with um, being able to submit work on Teams for other teachers. So, you know, it's a learning curve. And like I said in the very beginning, when we started this, it was. I was more concerned about getting my guys on and getting work to them. That's why I used email um, because they, they were very familiar with it. The guys in my self-contained classes. So that's what I stuck with um, just because I didn't want to mix, change it midstream because they were actually being somewhat successful with it. Okay. We are starting to run short on time. Any creative ideas out there? Ashley? Um, yeah, I'm going to have to leave because she's awake. But I was thinking, um, going, I guess going back to hybrid, only because my kids had such a hard time online. Um, and I do have a parent that I know is, is fearful of sending her child to school. So if, the, if it's a parent's choice, if there's a way we could set it up well, as I'm giving instruction to my students who are present, I could be Zooming with the student that's home because, I mean, it, it, it depends on the parent's choice and it depends on how much the parent's able to, to help their child at home. Right. Uh, so just for my own like little bubble that I, that I have, that might, that might work because that way he's still receiving instruction, even though he's not physically in the school surrounded, mm -hmm. uh, that might work for other parents that would be concerned as well just a possibility. And I will piggyback that to the institutional budgetary and regulatory obstacles because there is a regulatory obstacle to that right now that has not been lifted by the federals, the federal government. So there's a lot hinging that a lot of people don't know about and I certainly don't want to bore you people with it, but those are the kinds of things that the state and the feds have got to get on the same page about flexibility. There's very little flexibility between state and federal guidelines. And so it kind of goes back to problems again. I think, you know, for those types of students right now, that option would be homeschool your student, not you can do a part-time instructional model through school. Those are regs. Those are barriers that have not been lifted yet. Um, so, and I don't want to get into too much of that. For this group, I think it's more maybe budgetarily because um, we know that we didn't get the aid that we wanted to get and that cuts are, are likely going to happen. Um, and so trying to get creative around that. Um, especially if you do many small groups of children, how are you going to have the staff to do that, right? So how do we get the staff to do all small group instruction? How do we, you know, where do we get the staff? Um, uh, which goes back to regulation and how many minutes have to be delivered for L students and special ed students. There's a lot of things they have not loosened their reins on that we're trying to, you know, to navigate around. Um, and believe me, they're hearing about it. And I think we can be very creative with how we do things with parents and students, but the regulations don't, aren't bending. That's just my two cents and I, I'm not supposed to talk, so I'm gonna be quiet. <laughs> um, Kathy, thoughts from you. Unmute your microphone, Kathy. We can't hear you. <laughs> there you Thank go. Thank you. Thank you. I do that. I do this. I'm on calls all the time with work, and I do that all the time. Uh -huh. um, all right. So just quickly, yeah, I I agree 100% with what Cheryl was saying about um, having it on a regular basis, the instruction. And I mean, I know way back when the whiteboards and were coming in, one of the one of the um, arguments for them was that they could do this you know, remote interactive distance learning all over the globe. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if that can be somehow used, but, but yeah, that would have been one of the drawbacks when we were doing this, um, this time was 
was the amount of time. It would have been nice, yeah, if, if Abby knew, okay, I'm still going to have the same school day. So at, at nine o'clock, the bell goes off and I go to this class. And whether I'm sitting there on a Zoom meeting, um, she's still getting the same instruction that she would have normally gotten. I mean, I know some classes might, you know, be a little more challenging than others for that. But, um, but yeah, that's something that I would have liked to have seen is, is the regular instruction. More like being in a class, but just doing it virtually. Um, and yeah, the internet access, I, I just, I know a little bit about that because Devin works for GTEL. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they did, um, they actually were approached by the school for some families who didn't have access to it. So if you know of somebody who is having that difficulty, um, I mean, certainly talk to Sue and probably already have, but, um, you know, Sue works with GTEL on, on trying to get families up to speed on that. Um, so. And um, and yeah, maybe some. I, I know that we we we're all thrown under the bus with with this happening so quickly and trying to figure out yeah Outlook versus Teams and that. But if we have a little bit more, um, you know, mm -hmm. time that we know this is going to happen, then creating some sort of little instructional materials on this is how you use it mm -hmm. uh, might might help families too. Because yeah, we were learning on the fly ourselves, and you know, I, I leaned on on poor Devin a lot. You know. <laughs> Glad he's still living at home. <laughs> that he You're just works <laughs> works half a mile up the street at our local service provider. So uh, yeah, it was. Uh, anyway, that's it for me. Great, Susan. Hi, thanks. Um, so this kind of ties in with what um, Cheryl was saying, but um, it, it for me, if I had students coming into my room. Um, it would change my routine about, you know, not having them go over and pick up a do now and a pencil and go to their desk. It would be they come in, they go to their desk. In fact, they come in single file, six feet apart and go to their desk, right. uh, which is, you know, locked to a position on the floor. And then um, just use having the teacher be the one that touches the materials and passes them out. I think just to um, cut down on how many people are touching the materials. Um, and then all of them having their own calculator. They can't, there couldn't be any sharing unless there was time in between to be wiping them down. And uh, that's not practical with back-to-back -back classes. Um, one of the specific challenges I had, and I don't know if there is a solution to this, I was using a lot of whiteboarding um, using a tool, which meant I'm sharing my screen and then I'm either filling out a worksheet or a modeling how to solve a problem. While I'm doing that, I can't see my kids. <laughs> so I don't know if there's a way it, it, that I, you know, there is a, a technology where I can bring up two screens and one of them is I'm able to see the kids and the other one uh, I'm able to write. But my TA, when I have a TA, if she could be watching my kids even. So uh, some way to deliver that. Um, if something exists, some technology exists, that's something I could really use, a way to see my kids while I'm whiteboarding and sharing. Um, Sarah's shaking her head, I see that. <laughs> yeah. um, Is there a way that if we had to do the remote instruction next year for the students, can the teachers be in their particular classrooms because we'd social distance, mm -hmm. we need to be in our own room, where our materials are. Um, and I think for a lot of teachers, that would be beneficial to be able to do their Microsoft team class meetings from their own particular classroom with their own materials. Because literally when we left, we thought it was gonna be two weeks. And I don't think a lot of people brought mm -hmm. a lot of stuff home. Um, so if you could, if we had a regular school day where we went our normal eight to three thirty, and we did everything from our classroom with our materials, I think for some people that would even be more beneficial because mm -hmm. you'd have your whiteboard, you could set your um, camera on that and do it right there with your whiteboard instruction. Well, even with the Apple TV technology, I'm pretty sure we can be writing on the board and it can be um, sent directly to the student. I don't even think you mm -hmm. need a camera, but it's we need really good IT support through this too. Um, 
on structuring not too many solutions because if you look at 20 of them it's just too much for us it's too much for the parents i think and too much for the students but we need some uh, a subset of really good hard-hitting uh, best of breed tools that are commonly used so we're, we're minimizing how much learning has to happen on tool usage Okay, we've got about three minutes left and Sue's gonna yank us back. Any final comments without digging too deep in the budgetary and regulatory obstacles? Um, that's a big one. I forgive everybody <laughs> for not having those answers. That really has to come from the top. The only, the only other thing that um, I found to be really difficult. One of the things I found difficult is if there was a way that we get rid of the student like icons and they mm -hmm. have to see their smiling faces because e there are some kids who, uh, yeah, they were there. And if I called on them, eventually they would respond, but I don't know where they were in between because, right. Mm, you know, I mean, I, there were kids who would be sitting there and they, they who were on camera who would say, okay, just put your cell phone away, pretend we're really in class. Um, you know, but, you know, but then there's those other kids who I'm going, I have no idea where they were other than there was, you know, a dragon or there was a tractor or there was a, you know, right, whatever right. icon was. That's kind of back, yeah, ties in with mine is I need to see, we need to see the kids. Yeah, you right. need to see it. And we had some kids in some of the meetings that I was in with other teachers, the meeting would end and that icon would still be there because the kid turned the icon on and left. And left. Right. <laughs> yeah, I had some of that, yeah. Okay. Um, and Yvonne, one other thing I'd like to see, I know this is the operations committee, I think, but directional arrows in the, in the building. So there becomes a uh, single file, uh, they walk, you know, on one side, one direction, the other side, the other direction through the school, if they can, to the extent possible. <laughs> I think um, Sue's probably about ready to yank us back. You're probably going to hear that in, okay. in as each of us report out of those discussions. It is kind of hard to stay in our caveat. I, I understand that because there's so many other things that hinge upon what we're yeah. trying to do. But I do so appreciate everybody's feedback. We're going to be looking at everybody's recorded sessions, I'm sure, over the next week. And I'm sure Sue is going to share that we'll all come back together probably in another couple of weeks. Okay? All right. So I'm expecting her to yank us back any second now. And uh, we'll wait for her to let us get our um, potty or drink break. And then um, I'm going to collect my thoughts and report out on some of your thoughts. Okay? Okay, okay. Okay, thanks. All right, guys.